Tech Fetzak, welcome back to my channel, in case you're new here. My name is Matthew van der Bitter. I'm a time-lapse photographer living in London, and this channel is all about time-lapse travel and tutorials, and today we're doing Star Trails. Milky Way season is back, the time of year where we can see the core of our galaxy. Grab your camera gear, brave the darkness and the cold, and end up with photos and sequences like this. But what if you want more? What if you want to combine these photos into a single photo and create a Star Trail image? Today I'm teaching you how to do that with a free app called Star Stacks and with a paid app called Photoshop. First up, you need to find a dark sky. Light pollution is your enemy on this one. I use a website called darksightfinder.com to figure out where I should be going. I grew up in Belgium, which is statistically one of the worst countries in the world as far as light pollution goes, and then when I was 23 I moved to Australia, which is statistically one of the best countries in the world for light pollution. Or, like, not light pollution. Or astrophotography. Anyways, Australia is great. So depending on where you are, you either need to drive a couple of hours, or if you're in Outback Australia, you can probably just shoot from your backyard. Secondly, you need to figure out where to point your camera. Obviously you're going to shoot on a tripod with your camera on top, and then you gotta point it somewhere to let the sequence run. Now where do you point? Luckily, it's quite easy. In the Northern Hemisphere, you can use the Ursa constellations to figure out where Polaris, or the North Pole, or the Pole Star is. The North Pole? The North Pole Star? Whatever it is. Figure out where it is using this guide. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, which has all the stars flipped upside down, you can use the Southern Cross and the two Magellanic Clouds. Sorry, there's fluff flying around, it's distracting me. The two Magellanic Clouds to figure out where to point the camera. Now, you don't necessarily have to point the camera in these two directions, but it helps if you want to have like a concentric thing around which the stars turn. By the way, the stars don't, don't, the stars don't turn, we do. Our ball of dirt floats through space while spinning around, hence the illusion that the night sky is turning, but it's actually us. The settings that you're going to use will totally depend on the gear and your location, but this is what I used for this photo. So, kick back, relax, let your camera run for at least an hour, I would say, uh, then head home, offload your images, and either color grade the sequence of RAW files that you shot, or just use the JPEG series straight out of camera. In this example, I'm using straight out of camera JPEGs, and these were shot on a 60 Mark II before it was announced. I shot this, I think, three years ago in Goulburn, which is a couple hours south of Sydney, for the launch video or the hype video for the 62, which is to date one of the cooler projects that I've done to create the launch ad for a new camera. We didn't have the raw processor at the time for this camera, so we had to use the JPEGs. Once you've got your JPEGs, open up StarStacks. In case you haven't downloaded it, you can find the link on my blog. And in case this tutorial is going too fast, you can follow it at your own pace on my website. Every tutorial I make, I turn into a written article uh, because sometimes tutorials go too fast. Adjust your settings in the panel on the right. The built-in manual is actually way better at explaining what all the settings do than I can explain it to you, so I highly recommend you check that out, but pretty much it's plug-and-play software. Some notable things with StarStacks. One fun setting is Comet Mode, which instead of creating a line, creates a comet-looking line, like a little tail. Another cool thing about StarStacks is that you can enable it to save a frame after each step of processing. The processing is quite slow, but it does save a new sequence. This new sequence you can then turn into a video file in which you can see the star trails getting formed, which I really like. Another great thing StarStacks does, I can't believe the software is free, is it has a gap filling mode. So if your interval was too long and there's gaps between your star dots, between your stars, it actually fills those out for you, which Photoshop doesn't do. So, here's one of the photos we started with. Here is the time lapse of that sequence. Here is the star trail image of that sequence. And here is the star trail time lapse. This is one of many reasons why I love time lapse. You commit to one sequence and you end up with a bunch of stills, a time lapse, you can make a time slice out of that, all these different things all from just setting up one shot. That was Star Stacks. Now let's talk about Photoshop really quickly. Photoshop is much, much faster these days at processing the Star Trail images, but lacks the three key features that I mentioned briefly earlier. So go to File, go down to Scripts, and select Load Files into Stack. Let it load, which might take a while depending on your system. Then double click this Smart Object, select all the layers, and set the Blend Mode to Lighten, and boom. Straight away, you've got your star trail image. Photoshop doesn't allow you to save frame by frame like StarStacks does, and it doesn't have the gap filling, etc. But 
you know, it's useful. A lot of people have Photoshop, then again, Star Stacks is free, so do what you want. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about Star Trails. You can use discount code I like Star Trails on my ebook, The Astro Time Lapse Guide, which teaches you everything about planning, shooting, and processing the highest possible quality Astro time lapses. If you like my free tutorials, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can buy me a cup of coffee per month or more. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. This is the second time I'm recording this video because the first time I forgot to plug my microphone in. Not only that, but I shot two videos in a row, so I have to reshoot two videos. On to the next one. Goodbye.